He is Arthur Curry, Aquaman, King of Atlantis, member of the Justice League, world leader, superhero, and a bridge between the surface world and the world below, and to far too many humans, the dictator of a rogue state. But Arthur and his beloved fiance Mira are determined to prove to humankind that Atlantis can be a force for peace and justice. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. We are continuing our aquatic adventure in the year of Aquaman. This time I am reviewing the, what I am labeling as the first part of the Aquaman Rebirth reviews because the series is currently ongoing, or I should say the regular Aquaman series, and I have here for you the first four trades, which would be the first 30 or so issues of the current title. This, my friends, is one of my favorite books that I am currently reading. It is fun, it is filled with excitement, the action is intense, and Dan Abnett really knows his stuff and really knows how to capture the essence, or the beauty, I should say, of what makes Arthur Curry Aquaman such an awesome character, such a beloved icon for superhero fans worldwide. I am a huge Aquaman fan, and I was thrilled to finally have the opportunity to read and review these books for you guys and it is spectacular there are some low points I will admit but for the most part it stays entertaining throughout the entirety and it really extends on what was built the foundation of what Jeff Johns did to the character of Arthur and that uh, reinvigoration I guess I should say was really spectacular and really did a wonderful job of just uh, modernizing this character which was labeled a, a, a silly caricature at times and really prove once and for all that uh, yeah he is essentially a aquatic Superman if you will with all his traits and many flaws and that to me is the most interesting aspect but we're but we could dedicate a whole video to that and I will eventually just talking about uh, why I like the character so much and why I think you know, he he has been such an underrated uh, superhero for so many years, more than 75 years. But in this case, we're talking about DC Rebirth. I have the first trade here with me, or actually I should say I have the first four trades right here. To briefly summarize what's happening, you don't really need to read uh, Dan Abnett's New 52 run, which I reviewed on my previous Aquaman video, but if you do check it out, you will find out that Dan basically set up the essential, what you really needed to know of the character with stuff like the founding of the uh, embassy for Atlantis or characters like Deadwater and stuff like that. That is the basis, and if you want to know where that came from, you're going to have to pick up the last volume of the New 52 run. Dan, however, knows that not a lot of people are going to go and pick up a random book which has issues 50 to 52 or something like that. So he took the idea that he wrote on that book and presented it once again for new readers. And so yeah, you don't really need those books per se, but like I always say, if you want the full picture, then go ahead and pick them up. Uh, Dan uh, continues the story of Aquaman and Mira establishing this embassy in Amnesty Bay in Maine, I guess, and uh, how the world reacts. You start getting into the political intrigue of it all, of this rogue nation that's suddenly emerging from the depth of the sea and wants to be recognized by the UN. And I think they could have elaborated on that a little bit. However, the story goes into a very familiar territory, which was kind of one of my low points because it turned out to be Throne of Atlantis 2.0. Uh, eventually things go south and you get a terrorist attack from none other than Black Manta. And uh, the blaming of Atlantis begins once again and the mistrust for the character. And it's a very different 
type of mistrust where you've got vigilantes like Batman where uh, the city itself is after this character sometimes depending on the story but with Arthur you get a whole nation and you start getting these themes of xenophobia and all that and I guess for some it might be a little bit preachy but it's still as relevant as ever because uh, like it or not humanity has a track record of mistrust and uh, prejudice that cannot be shaken and cannot be stirred away this is something that's uh, current and it's done in a way where it's not too preachy if you hate that sort of thing I myself did not really mind but yeah after the whole Black Manta attack everybody starts blaming Atlantis so Arthur has to step up and defend the nation as well as uh, provide a link that and, and establish a narrative that no this was an isolated event and it's not representative of what our nation is doing we want to bridge that gap between the sea and the land and air and whatnot and become a force for good and be recognized as one of the leading nations in the world because Atlantis in the story is a technological wonderland if you will underwater so all of that happens and you get this epic confrontation and uh, by the way, this whole run is very similar to Jeff John's New 52 stuff, just a little bit grittier, a little bit more murky and dirtier in the way that uh, you present real politics and how nations react to uh, our main leads and uh, their home country. Volume 2, Black Manta Rising, continues that storyline and gives us one of the most epic things I have ever seen and just a really fourth wall breaking moment where you have the character examine his role in society and amidst the public uh, perception and the Justice League and all of that and once Atlantis uh, is uh, in a state of war with the humanity because of a uh, third act if you will a third wheel causing problems in the name of Atlantis with some terrorists and stuff like that you get the character of Arthur Curry examining what it means to be a hero, what it means to be the Aquaman, if you will. Mira being that anchor that uh, really just uh, represents all the noble intentions. And you've got the Justice League as well, and you've got the character of Superman that really reinforces uh, Arthur's role in all of this. I thought it was just awesome, it was tense, and just seeing Arthur standing up to Big Blue like that, I enjoyed the hell out of that. And basically, if you've always been a fan, it'll speak to you and you'll understand and you're gonna feel like, hell yeah, this is, this is my superhero and he's the underdog and all of this and people just don't understand. I love that scene, I love, uh, the story. I don't want to give anything away because I want you to be intrigued and I want you to pick up the book. So I think it's very uh, cool. Next up in volume three, which I do have right here, Crown of Atlantis, right? Uh, yeah, Crown of Atlantis goes back into the heavy politics of this Game of Thrones-esque world that is Atlantis and finds uh, the character in the midst of a coup d'etat of sorts. And that is awesome because you get to explore the inner workings of the city you get to see new grounds and like I mentioned in my new 52 review the history of Atlantis is a little bit murky it's uh, you don't really understand all of it but you're intrigued by it and every writer adds another layer of history to the city to the characters to this wonderful world at DC Comics so I really really appreciated that just uh, just great writing um, you get new ideas new concepts for these characters sure in not my it might not be the best of the rebirth stuff of course uh, you've got your uh, Superman and Batman detective comics specifically those are a quality material but to me as a huge fan I freaking love this run and it is amazing now volume 4 continues that and brings us a uh, look Story-wise, I do understand why they went with the look, but I can't help but think maybe they're trying to morph uh, cinematic Aquaman with the comic book version so it's reflective on both sides, similar to what Marvel does with their Marvel characters in uh, being a mirror of the movies and stuff like that. 
so I got it. But I, I am typically a fan of the Boy Scout look with the shorter hair. But regardless, all looks are cool, all, all the looks are awesome, and it has art by the wonderful uh, Cedric. I'm not going to say the full name because I'm probably going to butcher it, but the art is spectacular. I fell in love with it. At first, I wasn't too sure because it's underwater, is uh, a little bit more light in the way that it's drawn, but it blends perfectly and he is able to bring out emotions out of these characters. It's one of his defining characteristics in my opinion, where the way he pencils the characters, he's able to do like three-dimensional facial expressions on the characters like Aquaman, Mira, and even newcomers like Dolphin, which, uh, yeah, she finally gets her reintroduction into the DC world. She was uh, seen many years ago with Peter David's run, so now we're getting Dolphin again, and she looks fantastic. So yeah, it ends on a big cliffhanger. I cannot wait. I'm gonna take a little break after this and not review the rest of the reword stuff, just so I can compare, like, volume 5, 6, or whatever, to uh, these first four and see the natural progression. But overall, some la some final words on the title of on the rebirth title, if you will. It is very much what was done before, but elevated to a sense of urgency of public spotlight and world politics and prejudice, racism, xenophobia, and these elements that really do a good job of bringing these characters to life in an interesting, mysterious, and awesome way. I don't know what you guys think, I, I thought it was fantastic, and I didn't talk too much about the art aside from Cedric, but I'm gonna say Brad Walker is easily my in my top five list of best Aquaman artists of all time. Uh, so there you go that that tells you something it is fantastic plus the issue the solo mira issue a work of art one of my favorites so what do you guys think of aquaman rebirth if you've read it if not hopefully i have intrigued you to check out the title because it is worth your time as always you can follow me on your favorite social media platform thank you again for liking subscribing commenting on these videos you guys are the best as always thank you so much and i will catch all of you on our next video Guys, what do you guys... Nah. <laughs>